This information video discusses enteral feeding and what parents need to know if their child requires enteral feeding. If your child is not getting enough nutrition through their normal diet, or if they cannot swallow their medications or food, a nasogastric tube may be inserted into your child. A nasogastric tube, or NG tube, is a thin, soft silicon tube. It passes through your child's nasal passage, down the back of their throat, down the esophagus and into the stomach. Inserting the tube is usually quick and an anaesthetic is not required. As a parent or with the assistance of play therapists, you may be able to help relax or distract your child whilst an NG is being placed. The tube is taped to your child's cheek so that it does not move or fall out. Once an NG is put in, a liquid formula suited to your child's nutritional needs can be put down the NG tube. Your doctor and dietitian will monitor your child throughout their treatment and will recommend if and when an NG tube should be placed. NG tubes need to be replaced every one to two months. If your child requires a nasogastric tube for a prolonged period of time, or if a nasogastric tube is not possible or impractical, your medical team or dietitian can talk to you about an alternative procedure. This is a feeding tube called a gastrostomy, also known as a PEG, or percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy. It is placed through the abdominal wall directly into the stomach. A PEG is placed by a gastroenterologist or surgeon. This procedure does require an anaesthetic. A liquid formula suited to your child's nutritional needs can be given via the PEG in the same way it is given for an NG tube. The equipment you will need to feed your child includes pump sets that will connect your child's NG or PEG tube, a PEG adapter or extension set, syringes, plastic feeding bottles to pour your formula into, formula and recipe for making up your child's formula if required, litmus or pH paper. Your equipment pack will also include a spare NG or PEG tube which you may need to provide to a medical staff member should the current one need replacing. Please speak to your dietitian about who to contact when you require equipment or formula in the future. It's important to be hygienic while preparing your child's tube feed. Hand hygiene is very important. Use a liquid soap and warm water. Lather your hands thoroughly, not forgetting to lather palms, between fingers, backs of hands and wrists. Then thoroughly rinse and pat dry using a clean towel or paper towel. It's also a good idea to ensure your kitchen bench space and utensils and equipment are clean before you start. Unopened powder or liquid formula should be stored in a cool, dry place. Formula prepared from powder or ready to feed liquid formula should not be left at room temperature for long periods and stored in the refrigerator for up to 24 hours. Please ask your dietitian if you have any queries. Bottles of ready to feed formula must be poured into your plastic feeding bottles and can be kept refrigerated for up to 24 hours after opening. Before putting anything down your child's NG tube, you need to check that the tip of the tube is safely in your child's stomach. If your child vomits, sneezes or plays with their tube, you will need to recheck the tube placement. It is very important that your child's NG tube is placed in the stomach. To ensure that the NG tube is in the correct position, you will be given a syringe and litmus or pH paper. Checking the position involves inserting the end of the syringe into the end of the NG tube and gently drawing back three to five mils of stomach contents into the syringe. Place a small amount of this onto your litmus or pH paper. 
This needs to indicate a low or acidic pH and this means the tube is in the correct position. Check with your dietitian or nurse prior to taking the litmus paper home. If you are having trouble testing the pH levels, please contact the Children's Cancer Centre. Do not give a feed or give medications unless you have checked the NG placement. If your child's feeds are delivered via a feeding pump, you will need to set up the pump. Feeding pumps are used when there are problems with managing a large volume of feed at one time or when overnight feeds are required. Your dietitian will discuss with you what rate of feed to give and for what duration. Feeding plans are very different for each child and are based on the volume of feed needed, your child's treatment side effects, your family's routine and the rate of feed that your child will tolerate. Once your pump is set up, connect the end of the pump set into the largest port of your child's NG tube and select start to commence the feeding. If you have any problems with your feeding pump, please refer to your contacts list that is provided with the pump. Alternatively, gravity or drip feeding sets may be used to feed your child. This works by moving the roller clamp up and down to change the rate of feed given. A gravity feed dripping at 10 drips per minute is the same as setting your pump at 30 mils per hour. A gravity set can be used if your pump breaks down. It is important to flush the feeding tube to avoid tube blockage. Keep the tube clean and free of infection. You should flush the tube using 10 to 20 mils of cooled boiled water using a syringe provided to you. The tube needs to be flushed once your child's feeds are stopped or paused. It also needs to be flushed after giving any medications through the tube. Always check with your doctor or pharmacist prior to putting any medications down the tube. All feeding equipment, which includes pump sets, syringes and containers, must be washed in warm, soapy water between each use. In most instances, pump sets can be reused, provided they are washed thoroughly after each use. The number of times you can reuse your pump set will vary at different hospitals, so please check with your dietitian. After washing the pump equipment, it should be rinsed well and drip dried thoroughly. Then store in a clean dry container with a lid and keep in the refrigerator. Do not soak equipment in Milton solution or other similar sterilising solutions as the plastic will be damaged and non-usable. If you are using your own baby bottles to give feeds, these should be sterilised in the usual way. Please speak to your dietitian if you have any queries or concerns. NG and peg feeding is important, especially if your child relies on this for nutrition. Therefore, you should be in regular contact with your dietitian to ensure your child's nutritional needs are met. If you wish to make any changes to your child's feeds, please contact your dietitian. They will consider your child's needs and provide appropriate advice. A hygienic and correctly placed tube is extremely important. If you have questions or concerns, please contact the healthcare team at your hospital 